Today, you are listening to Think Again Christian, where pop culture and Christian traditions collide with biblical truth. Sponsored by Rainier Christian Schools. And now your host, pastor of Ravensdale Bible Church and superintendent of Rainier Christian Schools, Tony Jamie. Rethinking, re-examining our concepts, beliefs, and ideas from pop culture and, and our Christian beliefs and values and, and the foundations that we, we hold true. Today we're going to be discussing one of my life mottos. It's reduced to do better, do better. Um, people who are around me, people who know me, uh, joke about it, tease me. Uh, there's not a day that goes by that I, I, I don't exhort people, do better. And it's just become such a part of me that I, I don't even have to think about it. I, I just, I, I, I do it. It, it. it comes out of my pores. My, my kids laugh about it all the time. Well, where did I get that from? And, and why is that important? Well, it, it started with, with a short poem. And I don't even know who the author is. I, I know who I learned it from, but I, I don't know who authored. And I've looked it up on the internet and haven't ever been able to fa- find it. But it's, the, the poem goes like this. It goes, good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better's best. And so over the years, I've, I've used this, this poem, and, and it's, it's gotten a little bit scaled down, like I said, to, to just, you know, two words, do better. But, but it's something that really has been used to, to, to give me motivation, inspiration, to pick me up when I'm down, to... And, and, and I've been able to apply this to every single aspect of my life, whether it was, you know, when I was a teenager in sports, whether it's uh, as, a, as a student in school, uh, when I got older and, and became, a, you know, a husband, and then now a parent, and then as, a, as an entrepreneur, and as a boss, and as a pastor, uh, it, it just never stops. I, I'm constantly implementing this, this phrase and this concept. One of the things I've discovered, though, is a lot of people actually take it the wrong way. And and that was kind of shocking to me because something that's just become such a a warm blanket in my life um, to even think or suggest that it would be a a negative statement was odd to me. And when I first started teaching uh, in in the business circle people about do better – it was met with some some resistance, and and I was and I didn't know why. And and the reason why is what I didn't what I didn't understand was in some way, shape, or form, some people took this comment as, well, "Am I am I not doing good? Um, am I, am I no good? Do you do you not value what I'm doing? Um, do you think I'm not trying?" And 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 it's just very interesting how 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 people can can spin that. But I, but I want to be very clear here that this is a a very positive. Uh, concept. The, the awesome thing about, about education, about going to school, about sports or music is you, you can walk into something at ground zero. You, you don't know how to swim. You don't know how to play the violin. You, you, you don't know how to, how to you know, do Spanish or Latin. And, and you can start, and actually you're, you're bad. You, you're, you don't know anything. And, and, the, and the goal is to get good, to, to learn, to grow, to progress. And then once you're good, well, let's get better. You know, if you start off with, you know, an F in class and, and then after a couple, a couple months, you were able to build that up and, and get it up to a C, that, that would be a great thing. Well, once you got it to a C, um, well, hey, let's keep going. Let, let's get that C up to a B and then let's, let's keep going and let's get that, that B to an A. And so the, that, that's part of the concept is that we, we go from good, uh, we go to, to better, and then we thrive for best. And then once we're the best, then we do a little something I like to call them be bester or be your bestest. I know as an educator, not a good thing to say. And I get rebuked for all the time, but th- th- there's, there's no other way to say it. We, we just, we continue to just want to keep improving, improving. And so do better then can be applied to, to just about anything. Well, where did I learn this from? And, when, and how was this indoctrinated in me? It started in seventh grade. And in seventh grade, I absolutely 
100% loathed going to school. Uh, the only benefit to going to school was unlike my, my Catholic buddies who went to an all-boys school, at least our school had girls. And so that was, that was great. But I would walk into Mr. Tacker's class. It was my very first class in middle school, or junior high as we called it in California. And all around the boards, we had chalkboards on all four, all four sides of the room, and Mr. Tacker was just finishing up in his cursive writing all the notes that he wrote down. I still don't know to this day why he did that. I mean, imagine having your notes and then writing them all out. It doesn't make sense, but that's what he did. He would write them all out and he would sit down and work on his, on making flies. He was a fly fisherman. And so he had his little kit there and he would sit there and do his flies. And we would just start writing and writing feverishly because once he got up, you had to have those notes because every single quiz that was on Friday was taken from those notes. So after a certain amount of time, you copied the board then he would give his little lecture, and, and that was that. It was a pretty structured class, pretty much the same every single day. It was a history class. There was one little thing that was in the upper left-hand corner, and I remember it to this day. It had a little starburst around it and looked like it had been up there forever. And I think every Friday the janitors would come and, and clean and wash the, you know, the chalkboards. Most of the kids don't even know what a chalkboard is nowadays. And... and except for that one section, because the do not erase. You did not erase Mr. Tacker's burst. And what did that, what was in there? It was good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better's best. And guess what Mr. Tacker used to do with that? Well, he used to assign that as standards. So not only did you have to stare at that every single day, all day, but if you happen to be a wise guy or you thought you were going to start talking when he was lecturing or talking when you finished taking your notes. Well, you just had a little bit too much extra time on your hands. And so Mr. Tacker would promptly give you 50, a hundred, couple hundred, you know, standards where you'd sit there and you would copy good, better, best, never let it rest until your good is better and your better's best over and over and over again. Needless to say, I might have had to write that down a few times in my day. And so without meaning to, it became something that I memorized. I memorized it like the back of my hand because I had to write it down all the time. I had to stare at it all the time. The cool thing was I actually had an outlet to, to start applying it. And that was for me through sports. And, and, I, and I wanted to be the best. And I, and I remember my dad telling me, you know what, son, you, you're, you're pretty good. Um, but, but you need to be the best on your team. And then I became the best on my team. It's like, well, you know, th that's good, but you should be the best in the league. And, and so, you know, I was the best in the league. And then it was, you know, you get into high school. So, well, 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 there's, there's schools from other cities and, you know, you need to be the best in, in the area. And so, you know, then I was the best in there. And then it was, you know, well, you're competing for a scholarship and, you know, son, you, you don't know, but you could be competing against somebody who's in Texas or Florida or Michigan. And, and so, you know, you, you, you've got to get even better. And it was a, a constant state of improve, 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 keep growing, keep growing. And ringing through my ears was Mr. Tacker's good, better, best, never let it rest. And believe me, my dad never let it rest. I mean, you know, I, I, I had to do sit-ups in between commercials. Um, every, you know, every single sporting event we watched, I was, you know, there was always barbells or something that I had to be doing. Uh, to get better at sports. You know, my dad was one of those who would walk into my bedroom and ask me, you know, what are you doing? And I'm doing homework. No, you should go hit. You should go lift weights. You should go improve. And my dad was pretty focused that way. When, when we start looking at this concept, and, and one of the things I discovered was not only do I, did I have to compete in sports, but, you know, you, you compete everywhere. You, you compete in academics. Um, and then you get a little bit older and you realize, you know, you're competing for a job and you get the job and then you realize, wow, I'm, I'm competing with the people within my job. And, and so the idea that you're not going to improve or get better at whatever it is that you do, uh, that's a dangerous proposition. Uh, one of the things that I've enjoyed as I've gotten older is to see uh, people that, that I run into and to see how gifted they are and you you find out, wow, they, they know how to actually do a lot of different things. They, they keep improving. They, they keep getting better. 
Uh, people who rise up to the top aren't lucky. It's not an accident. They, they've usually worked harder or more gifted, and they've improved upon those gifts, and they've actually expanded those gifts. And so the idea of good, better, best isn't an idea of like get rich quick. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. In fact, the beauty of it is you can be good and have time to get better. You can be better and have time to get best. It doesn't have to happen overnight. In fact, one of the ways that this has been described over there is called marginal gains. And I'll talk a little bit about a Japanese concept called Kaizen that that says it's marginal gains. But marginal gains is, look, we don't want to make these big giant leaps or big giant changes, right? You're struggling in your marriage and it's got to be this big giant change. You know, let's go to Hawaii. Let's do these five things and that's going to fix the marriage. Actually, it's, it's going to be a lot of little tiny things, you know, brush your teeth, make the bed, you know, bring some coffee, you know, help out around the yard, uh, little tiny little things and a bunch of them too, a lot of them. And so it, it, it again, it has that idea of imagine being on the river and, and sometimes we, we get on the river and we're tired. We've been, we've been rowing for a long time for many years and there's been battles and and heartache and hardship. And you know what? I just want to take a, a rest. I just want to take a breather. And, and the moment you stop rowing, you go backwards. The river just quietly and smoothly just, just takes you along. And I found that in life, many times, a lot of us just, things aren't horrible. They're, they're, they're not, you know, there's not major crisis, but there's just a lull. There's a law, and part of that law is because you, you've settled. And, and you can settle at good, you can settle at better, and you can even settle because you're, you're on top. But that drive to just keep going, keep improving, keep doing better isn't there, and that drive helps give you life. And so when we come back, we'll talk more about good, better, best. Since their small beginnings in 1963, the ministry of Rainier Christian Schools has been dedicated to educating and developing each of their students for the glory of God. And it's more than just a school. Rainier Christian Schools is actually an entire school district, with three schools serving the areas of Kent, Auburn, Covington, Renton, and Maple Valley. The Christ-centered environment weaves God's truth through everything they do, from top-notch academics all the way through their competitive sports programs. Learn more at RainierCSD.org or call 425-255-7273. That's 425-255-7273. Contact Rainier Christian Schools today. Welcome back. You're listening to Think Again Christian, sponsored by Rainier Christian Schools. And now your host, Tony Jamie. Good, better, best. Never let it rest until your good is better and your better's best. That's what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about the concept of do better. Do better. Now it's not a statement that we make because we we think you're lazy or you're a slacker. Uh, It's a statement that we say to to be encouraging, to be uplifting, to to continue to compete, to continue to improve, and uh, as Pete Carroll would say, to, to win forever as a Longtime USC Trojan fan, I learned about Pete Carroll a few years ago at USC, and one of the cool concepts that he came up with was this idea of win forever. And most definitely, if you're a USC fan, you instantly understand what that means. Why? Because you know what? Winning 10 games isn't good enough. Winning the Pac-10 or the Pac-12 now isn't good enough. Winning the Rose Bowl 24 times, more than anybody else, just saying especially after we just lost to the Huskies, which was painful, but I don't want to talk about it. But winning Rose Bowls just isn't good enough because we've gotten the taste of national championships. Now, the problem with national championships is, I don't care if you're a great program like you know Notre Dame or Michigan or USC, you're just not going to win enough. You're, you're not going to win the Super Bowl every year. It's not going to happen. But... You get a taste for that. And what are the expectations? The expectations are you got to do it again. Uh, The Seattle Seahawks just won a Super Bowl. 
a couple years ago. And the second after they won, the comments were repeat. Let's do it again. Now the Seahawks almost won the Super Bowl two years in a row and, and came a couple feet short of that goal. And at the end of the day, it wasn't good enough. It didn't satisfy. Why? Because inherent inside of us is good, better, best. The Seahawk fans wanted not only to be the best, but to be the best again, to be the bestest forever. And so the idea of win forever is, yeah, we're trying to win forever. We don't ever want to not win. And in life, and especially spiritually, especially spiritually, when I started to think about this and and think about what's at stake and what's at stake is eternity. We're, We're living for eternity. And so when we say forever as Christians, I mean, we literally mean that. We mean forever. We mean for eternity. And so even more importantly than using this as a motivational tool for, for an athlete or, or in sales, for sales guy or for your business, even uh, as you think about using it in, in life for parenting or, or for your marriage, Let's let's think about what what Scripture says about this concept. What does Scripture say about constantly improving? Well, one of the verses that I think of right away is is in in Philippians four. It says, you know, press on, keep pressing on, pursuing the prize of the upward call of Jesus Christ. So we forget what lies behind, good and bad, good and bad. And, and we press on. We keep the eyes, on, the eyes on the prize and we look forward. We keep fighting. We keep pursuing. We jump over the hurdles. We're, we're, we're called to consider trials and tribulations joyful times. Well, how can you do that if you don't have a constant pursuit of, of improvement? We see that we're called in 1 Corinthians 10.31 to to glorify God in, in everything that we do, whether you eat or drink or whatever it is you do, give glory, bring glory, bring honor to the Lord God Almighty. Could you imagine standing before the altar of, of the Lord and saying, yeah, I, I did all right. I, I, did, I did good. I did good. Good is okay if you went from no good or fair, and that was the best that you could do, but good's not good if you could do better. And better's not better if you have more in you. And so we, we press on to that. Think about some of the concepts of things like repent. The idea of repent is, is stop what you're doing, stop the sinful activities that you're doing, and do better. Live for Christ better. Live a godly, holy life. First Peter talks about that. Think about the, the calling that we have to, to be holy as God is holy. Now, now we understand that that may be a, an impossible task, but that's our goal. That's our drive. When we think of ourselves uh, spiritually and we take a, a little spiritual um, you know, the barometer test, we say, look, I, I'm, I'm, if I'm only doing well, if I'm only doing good, I, I want to be a better Christian. I want to serve the Lord better. Now, I want to be the best, not, not for my own pride, but, but for the Lord. There was a book that came out a, a few years ago, a really good book called um, Good to Great. Good to Great. And one of the key tenets in that book was good is the enemy of great. Good is an enemy. It's an enemy when, when you can do better. And so whatever it is in life, if you're raking the leaves, you know, where my wife and I were just having a conversation about our, our oldest son and, you know, we asked him to take out the chicken or take out the chicken food out this morning to the chickens. And, you know, he got up late and he's got a big day ahead of him with school and football and whatnot. And things are crazy and hectic and busy making breakfast and lunch and gathering everything together. And, you know, he, he did what a normal teenage boy does. He just kind of just did a, a sloppy, half-hearted job, right? And as we were talking, it's like, we, we want him to do better. We want him to have a, a better attitude. We want him to take pride in what he does. Be, be the best kid chicken feeder that there is, right? Now, remember, this used to be a concept that used to drive Christians. Christians were known for their Puritan work ethic. 
I mean, they're going to make the best quilt. They're going to make the best touch. Right? They're going to make the best chair, the best bookshelves. And that would bring glory and honor to the Lord. And so we have to be careful that we don't fall into the trap of just being, just being good. We want to do better. One of the things that, that I've enjoyed at, at Rainier Christian Schools is, is part of our, our you know, vision is, is to be a place of excellence, a place of excellence. Well, that means you, you never stop. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you look at the flowers, you look at the lawn, you look at the paint on the walls, you, you, you look at the school top to bottom, not just the exteriors, but, you know, are we really uh, doing a great job spiritually? We're a Christian school. Are you really Christian? Are you really integrating biblical curriculum throughout the day? Are you really doing and putting on great chapels that are age appropriate and dynamic and, 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 and from God's word? Are we really taking those moments to mentor and disciple those students instead of just behavior modification when they get in trouble to actually take the time, be patient, walk them through biblically, counsel them and and be excellent at that or just do it as fast as we can and get through the day. And so one of the things that I've enjoyed doing is taking some of the business concepts that I've learned and, and take them into a Christian school setting, which is different. Because in Christian school setting is, is traditional education. And so now we come in and I introduce a concept called Kaizen, which, which comes from Japan. And it's the idea of continuous improvement. Now, the Japanese did something brilliant. And I love this. They, they humbled themselves to say, look, America's doing some things pretty well over there in, at Ford Company. Uh, they, they make these cars and they, you know, take them off the assembly line and, and are, are churning them out. Why don't we go there, learn from them, grow from them, but let's improve on that system and let's not stop improving on that system. And so one of the uniquenesses of the Japanese assembly line was anybody on the assembly line could stop it totally reverse in America where only the manager could stop production, right? Because it's got to get produced. You got to churn out. You got to produce product. Well, what if the product isn't any good? Well, then, you, or what if there's a flaw? Then you got a recall kind of a thing. Well, we'll figure that out when we, when we get there. Not in Japan. Let's make the best. And if somebody on the assembly line sees that there's a problem, he can stop it and we're going to improve it. It could be little things, little things. Again, not big giant movements. We don't want to scare anybody, right? But just little, small, continuous improvements. And so one of the things we put together is I put together a plan of really 25 major goals that I had throughout the school district on all kinds of levels could be athletic department, academics, spiritual, uh, many different things. And then we broke those down and into action steps. And then we broke those down into tactics and strategies. And so we came up with, with several hundred, but we we reduced them to only 500. So the goal was we're going to make 500 improvements this year. Now there's actually more, but I didn't want to frighten anybody. And so we went about that systematically, all of us, all 125 of us, and we made those improvements. And so by the end of the year, we could look at each other and say, we made 500 improvements. You know what we're going to claim? This was the greatest year ever. And we have 500 reasons why. And so the next year, we have 500 more, and we're going to do it again. And we're going to have the greatest year ever again, because we want to win forever. Why? Because souls are at stake. Lives are at stake. And we have a great opportunity to preach and teach Jesus Christ every single day to our students. And so, you know what? We want to do better. We want to do great. Well, again, you know, I've made posters and and little stamps that I, you know, make and, and, check on students' papers. I even have t-shirts that we've made and they have do better. We have, you know, we've posted them up in all our classrooms and, and banners and that kind of things. I, I'm even finishing a book called do better, but I really believe at the end of the day, what, what drives my desire is I just want to be a better servant of Jesus Christ. When I read the scriptures and, and it just calls out to me, there's exhortations everywhere. You know what? You can do better. You can follow Christ better. You can serve him better. You can be more holy. And so before you get trapped in a rut, think again about your marriage, your job, your spiritual life, 
and do better. You've been listening to Think Again Christian, sponsored by Rainier Christian Schools and Tony Jamie. Rainier Christian Schools serves preschool through high school with three locations in the Renton, Maple Valley, Covington, Kent, and Auburn 